Grand Bay, also called South City, is a vibrant community located along the Atlantic coast in the southeast of Dominica. The village is surrounded by several scenic mountain ranges including Guaden to the south, Palmiste to the west, Mont Platpes to the northwest, and Mont Anglais and Mont Wat to the north. The community of Grand Bay is characterized by its long, narrow street called Lale on both sides of which the largest population of the villages reside. The community of Grand Bay is commonly called the cultural capital of Dominica. The people of Grand Bay, often referred to as Grand Barians, are known to uphold the cultural heritage of Dominica in many art forms such as dance, music, arts, crafts and language. The Creole language and Kadas music in particular are an important part of the daily life of the community. The population of about 3,000 earns a living mainly through agriculture with the production of a variety of root crops, bananas, fruits and vegetables for local and regional markets. In April 2012, the Government Information Service News Team accompanied the Parliamentary Representative for the Grand Bay Constituency, Honorable Justina Charles, on a tour of the community of Grand Bay in an effort to highlight the various government-funded projects taking place within that community. The day-long tour also gave the Parliamentary Representative an opportunity to interact with residents of the community. The government of Dominica continues to pay special attention to the rehabilitation of the island's road network. While road rehabilitation works are currently a prominent feature across the island, residents of Tetmon are themselves soon to experience the benefits of having parts of the Tetmon road rehabilitated. I'm aware of it, I'm cognizant of, of, the, of, the, of the condition of the road. I travel it every week to go up there and so I know what it is and I feel the pain that they are feeling also. So I have, that is something that I've been raising in cabinet, we've been discussing it. I mean people have to understand while it is true there is work to be done and not only in the Grand Bay constituency, in all the, across the island we have to understand that the funds are limited. But in spite of that we try to see as much as possible how we can ease the pain of our constituents. At the 13th inaugural meeting of the Tetmon Village Council in May 2012, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt spoke about the construction of the Tetmon Road. In his response to concerns about the deplorable conditions of the road, the Prime Minister approved thousands of dollars to the rehabilitation of the community's road network. Let me say to you that we have noted the concerns that you have with the road and your concerns are legitimate. I know that we have sought to approach the roads in a phased approach, in a, a phased approach. And I, I was told that there were four phases to the improvement of the Tetmon Road. We've done two phases and have before me, and the, I was provided with the estimates um, a, week, well, a week or so ago, for the two other phases um, in respect to the roads leading up to Tetmon. And the phase three will be um, from the entry to Mountain Village, is that correct? From Mon Maniset to, to, um, to Mountain Village. And that will cost us about $138,000. That amount will be transferred to the Council's account by Tuesday next week, God's willing. So you can start work immediately to, to start completing the project. The, the second amount is in the region of $226,000. And that is phase four. That is from Ravin Banan to Powell. And because that road is in the jurisdiction of the Grand Bay Village Council, that money will be transferred to the account of the Village Council of Grand Bay to implement that aspect of the road because it is in the jurisdiction of the of Grand Bay Village Council. And that amount will also be made to, available to the Grand Bay Village Council by Tuesday, God's willing, of next week. And so work can almost start immediately. 
Parliamentary representative for the Grand Bay constituency, Honorable Justina Charles, says she was pleased when the Prime Minister added the reconstruction of the Tetmon Road to his list of priorities. I was happy, in fact, when the Prime Minister did announce that he was getting some money. We tried to, we discussed Tetmon and other parts of the country at cabinet level, and so we've agreed to include Tetmon as part of one of the areas where we will do some roadworks, and I'm, I'm really happy for that because it's really, I mean, stressful to be driving and going up there and to hear the persons reminding you this, the road, you know, and I mean, I know I feel the pain, but at the same time, I also understand the economic situation in the island. The Tetmon Road Rehabilitation Project, costing in excess of $134,000, is being reconstructed in several phases. Two sections of the road have already been completed. And we try to pay attention to the areas where it is worse. And so, in light of that, we've done two pieces in Tetmon and a little area as you enter in Mountain called Mon Maniset. The Grand Bay MP explained that proper drainage needs to be the main focus for this particular project. One of the most important things for us is the drainage because the damage to the road, the recent damage to the road really was because of poor drainage. And so, and there was one area where there is drainage but the drain was blocked. And I know the Honourable Prime Minister and even as parliamentary representative, prior to the rainy season we try to encourage persons to unblock the drains and to do the little things that they can do to help to alleviate those kinds of damage. And sometimes persons do not take heed of those calls. And one of the things that happened as we enter in mountain is that the main drain was blocked and it was not nobody really saw the need to open it up. And then the road, when it was blocked, the water came onto the road, lifted the asphalt and really damaged it. And as it continued, persons continue to use the road and vehicles drive, it gets worse. One resident expressed joy over the new infrastructure in Tetmon. It's indeed a pleasure. A great honor to be there today, I mean, even to walk on this road, I mean, it wasn't for our power rep. I've been, I've said myself that we have been left out. And then, when this lady decided to take responsibility to be our power rep here, I feel this is a very good thing, and this is a dream. I say, well, yes, um, it seems that, um, the legacy of our Prime Minister will be continued. So then we fully support the, our Prime Rep. And then she comes here and then we have we talk. This road was very bad. It was around, this road constructed maybe around 40 years back and then there, no one seems to, you know, pay attention. So she came here and then we, we had a reasoning and then she gave us that beautiful piece of road, especially in my home. So I uh, so appreciate that. That was, that was a good start. Another resident of Tetmon, Cecilia Commodore Mark, says as a way of showing appreciation for this new improvement, a beautification committee was organized to help with the upkeep of the new road. Oh, the road was in a, a very bad state and then after they come, they fix that piece of road. We were so happy when this happened, so we decided to plant flowers and maintain the road. So. Every three months, we just come together, we put our monies and the council gave us some help and then we um, clean the road, clean all the things, clean the flowers, maintain the flowers and keep the area looking good because the community is small. The community is small and there is not much people in the community but the little that is there, we try in our best to keep the community looking good. Mrs. Commodore Mark, a business owner, tells us of the benefits of having Segment 2 of the Waitukubali National Trail close by. Segment 2 of the trail extends from Sufria Estate to Bellevue Chopin. Mostly every, every day people pass through there and it's beneficial to me because sometimes when they pass in large groups, I get sales, I get to know people. I get to know white people, where they come from, if it's wherever, England and Germany. I wish I could speak German and those kind of things so that I could keep up with them. The road leading up to the resource center in Martin was also reconstructed by the Labour Party government at a cost of $21,000. Government also made funds available for a resource center a few years ago with the recent commissioning of the facility in May 2012. As a result of the construction of the brand new Grand Bay Police Station, roadworks in that vicinity was also reconstructed. One of the things that we saw happening is road development. 
You see, because probably if the police station was not there, I'm not saying we would not have had the road, but it would not have probably come at this time because there are other areas in the constituency that we require to upgrade our roads. And so we've seen the upgrading of the road leading to the police station. But even as I speak of that too, we also have uh, the upgrading of the road within the, the, the center area where government sold lots to res persons for residential purposes. And so the road had reached a state where it was no longer motorable. The persons with their vehicle could not cross certain areas because of, well, there was no drainage. Really, the roads were, were caught, but nothing was done. No drainage and no surfacing. And so the condition of the road deteriorated to the extent that persons could not traverse with their own vehicle with their transport. Now we've done the worst part. I mean, we spent over a hundred thousand dollars and we've just completed a portion of the road. But even the areas that have not surfaced, what we attempted to do is to do the drainage and we grade the road so that at least persons can drive uh, on the surface, you know. And with the drainage, we know at least the surface will not be damaged too soon if, let us say, we were to face the rainy season. So we know at least we will have a free flow of water to protect the road. Next stop on the tour was the newly constructed Grand Bay Police Station. This project was funded by the government of Dominica and the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, costing in excess of $3.6 million. The new police station includes space for a charge office, an interview room, two cells, and accommodation for 13 men and three women with a separate inspector's quarter. It will also allow for more police personnel to be stationed in Grand Bay from time to time particularly during the peak seasons of community festivities and celebrations. This project is nearing completion. It's really a, 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 a nice building. I think it's going to bring most, much relief to the police officers. I think the whole ambience, the whole environment, the whole scenic area is something that is going to boost the morale of the police officers that will be housed there and for some persons who think that this is just this is a cell i say to them it's no longer it's not a prison because we only have two temporary holding cells in this building and the old police station as i said had two temporary holding cells and so it has not increased which means that you are not looking at grand Bay persons as criminals but basically every community there are some facilities that are needed in every community you need schools you need health centers you need post office you need churches you need police station and these are basic things that are required in all all community and more so Grand Bay is the largest community in the south so that is definitely the most appropriate location for it. The Minister for Culture, Youth and Sport says this modern state-of-the-art police station adds value to the community referred to as centre. Even just having a police station that has boosted the whole, I mean it has changed the whole the ambience of the whole environment, you know, it has caused that area to be, as I said, an expensive area, you know, because now that you have the police station, you have the fire station, you have the health center, you have all the important buildings in the constituency located in one area you know that area now is considered to be one of the probably most expensive areas in grand bay you know a fencing project was recently undertaken to secure the perimeter of the grand bay primary school this project costs in excess of one hundred and twenty thousand dollars usually most of the public public facilities are open and persons come on there and you have persons tying animals on there and can enter the facility you know and I think it is one of the ways of protecting those, those, those public buildings and so I am happy with the fencing project around the school it allows the principal the students to even do their own little agriculture and persons will not just walk in and just access you know whatever is within the compound as of late, a multi-purpose court for all sporting facilities has been constructed. The court is situated in Martin, close to the newly constructed resource center. The Grand Bay MP, who is also the Minister for Sport, says soon after assuming her role as parliamentary representative for the area, one of the main requests from community members was a sporting facility. There are quite a few young persons up there who are very interested in sporting activities and they had no facility where they could really practice or, or play their sport. And in spite of the absence of the sporting facilities, the Tetmon village emerged winner in the district sports festival and so I think that was 
enough to motivate me to want to really do something for them to add, to add it to their request and so as one of my constituency based projects I sourced funds from constituency empowerment ministry and uh, for the approval of really the Minister of Finance was the Prime Minister and so we were able to construct the Tetmoen um, Tet um, had court. Andrew Laura, a teacher at the Tetmon Primary School and sports coordinator for the community, says this sporting facility will serve the communities of Tetmon and Martin well. We had no sporting facility before. We will. Uh, we have a much majority of our villages made up of young people, and um, to take part in any sporting activity, we would have to go all the way to Grand Bay to do it, regardless of what the sport it was. But right now, this facility is being used by everybody in the community. We have the boys, they practice their cricket here. We have the girls doing their wrong as practice so far. According to Mrs. Charles, the young people within the community have already begun to utilize the hard court, although it is not fully completed. One of the things that we found is as soon as the, court, the hard court itself was completed, the young person started making use of it. The netball rims are there, so they're already practicing the netball. They're using it to do their physical exercises and everything. And even sometimes their own social activities where they come to raise their funds and so for them to, to be able to continue their, the work of the sports com, com, committee in Tetmon. So they are really making good use of the facility even while it's not fully completed. And so I will work closely with them to ensure that we can complete that. Plans are already on the way to enhance the grounds further to accommodate all local sporting activities. And the hard court itself cost us about $46,197. Now, even when we visited, there is still some more work to be done because we've completed it, but in order to secure the, the right, the, the uprights for the basketball and netball, we need a little extension at the back to ensure that we have the full width of the court. And so the sports committee in Tetmon, they are quite willing. They've done part of it on a voluntary basis and they are willing to continue to do that. And so we are going to do that so that we can get, the sports division has already agreed to come up to do the markings on the court for them. So as soon as we can complete the width that is desired, we will get the sports division to come and do the courts, to come and do the markings. Miss Laura says it is anticipated that sporting competitions will now be held in the community of Martin. Well, we will have games from um, the other communities. We will invite the other communities to come up and we'll have our games here instead of we always going out to the other communities to have our games. So hopefully by the end of this year, we are hoping to have the court fenced. We'll have gates to, um, not to keep out the people, but to keep out the dogs from um, defecating on it. And um, hopefully by the end of this year, our court will be in full gear mapped and ready to go. A retaining wall was also constructed prior to the hard court, which cost in excess of $33,000. Mrs. Charles says for safety purposes, the next phase of the project will be the installation of fencing around the court. We've noticed that we need to put some perimeter fencing because in order to avoid any 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 danger because really at the present it's really a safety hazard and so we've already get a costing on it and I have already spoken to the to lot to the, the persons at lotteries commission I've spoken to Mr Monroe and he's quite willing to assist us. We may not be able to get all the money for lot from lotteries commission but I'm hoping that we can source other 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 avenues so that we can really come up with the total fee total amount of money that is required to do the fencing. So definitely the fencing will be the next part of the project. One resident in Tetmon expressed concern over the water supply system in that community. I need to stress the water the system, we need some improvement in it. This community, we do not have water 24 hours anytime. Seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, we never have water for, for 24 hours. And this has a kind of effect on the communities. Most of the retirees that come back build outside instead of here. And I suspect that this is this this is, this is the, the problem stems from from not having a regular water system and the road project. So people rather go and build at Wallows or Castle Comfort and so on instead of coming back here. Unlike 
Grand Bay, Geneva and Soufouye and so on where most of the retirees came back and built in their communities and built it up, you know. So we we really need those those kind of facilities so that people who are returning can be encouraged to build build here and develop the, the village much further. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt has since inquired further about the matter and has requested estimations for an upgraded water system in the Tetmon vicinity. One of the many objectives of the Labour Party government is to improve water systems across the country to ensure greater access to potable drinking water by all Dominicans. We have started addressing this in a frontal manner and we have no doubt that we will complete the total um, rehabilitation of all the water supplies in Dominica over the next few years. According to Water Resource Minister Honorable Reginald Austri, government understands the significance of water and will continue to implement water supply projects to upgrade and improve water quality and to extend existing water supply systems to meet the growing demands of all communities. Government's housing revolution program continues to impact positively on the lives of nationals across the island. While some may take adequate housing for granted, others live in less than ideal conditions on a day-to-day -day basis. Many of the less fortunate people like this gentleman from Grand Bay are beginning to experience a new way of life with the housing program initiated by the Roosevelt Skerritt administration. I, I can say it's a good thing because I was living in a little house and right now I live in a little better. If the Prime Minister put it cheaper, I must get it cheaper because, yeah, and for true, I get it cheaper because I get a different paper. Yeah, it's a top yeah. Paper, but how much you get it? Yes, yes. One dollar? Yeah, one dollar for true. I'm trying my best. One day I'll finish pay it, man. I say that, yeah, no, for true. That's a little better for me, yeah. Because well, I used to live in a little kitchen. I never even have room. I have two rooms and a good hall. Yeah, still they start the kitchen and bathroom and thing, but anyhow, I'll try my best to see how, yeah. can complete. Yeah, how things will work. Yeah, I don't feel bad about it. I feel good. Okay, yeah, to yeah. tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I still say, I still say, praise God. Mm -hmm. The day when you did tell me, leave that in your hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and I see you start something and that complete. For many years, Beatrice Bla, an elderly resident of Martin, lived in less than favorable conditions. That was so until the Labour Party government came to her aid. She says prior to receiving assistance, her home was in a deplorable state. She could not sleep at night because water would seep through her home and wet her. And today, thanks to the government, she no longer gets wet. She praised the government for coming to her rescue. In keeping with its policy to improve the conditions of the less fortunate and underprivileged, the Dominica Labour Party government has empowered one resident of Wavin Banan by assisting her with the materials needed to build her own home. Christina Bla, a mother of five, will finally be able to say she's a homeowner. For many years, Christina and her children, along with her siblings, nieces and nephews, have been residing in her mother's home. Christina told us during an interview that without Prime Minister Skerritt and his government, this would have only been a dream. The government assisted me with a little house, to bedroom. I have a disabled boy and then he cannot do nothing on his own, so I went to my parent and she helped me with that project. And I am very happy about it. And I thank in my pile rep, my government, and the people in the village council. I tell them thank you very much for the help. The foundation for her new two-bedroom home is currently in progress. Angelina Joseph of Backstreet is another resident who has benefited from the Housing Revolution program. She was ever so thankful for the Labour Party government's assistance. It was more bad. Because everybody passing, they were seeing me outside. I two foot outside. I used to put a two board inside there. When rain fall in, rain wet in me, but I, when I put the board, it wasn't wet in me. So, when they come to fix it for me, I was so glad. Thank you for, what, all, for all what they do for me. Thank you. Catherine Gregoire, also a beneficiary of the Housing Revolution Programme, 
says she is grateful for what the government has done for her. Before I had an old wooden house, it was not good at all. But now, my PM and my PI rep, I have a blog house. So I thank both of them, and who do have, they will help them. Miss Gregoire, extremely proud of her new home and passionate about her Prime Minister, blushed while speaking about him. Oh, my Prime Minister? Oh, I don't see nobody else like him. He's a wonderful. I think he was coming today, you know. But they, when they tell me he's not coming, I, my hand just fell. I want to see him bad, bad, bad. You see where I have him? That's my baby boy. Honorable Justina Charles says that the Roosevelt Skerritt administration is committed to assisting citizens across Dominica who are in dire need of housing accommodations. We could have brought so much relief to some persons who are really in distress and dire need for housing assistance. And the, the need for housing assistance is a constant thing and persons ask for it on a daily basis. And during even on Thursdays when you go to the constituency office, you walk the streets and that is a, that is a constant cry, can you assist me with my house, I need a few windows, I need a few galvanized, you know and those kinds of things. Some persons want extensions on their house and so the need is, 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 is there. And it's it's a gradual process and everybody cannot benefit at one time, but I will do everything that I can do as the parliamentary representative to address the needs as far as I can possibly do it. During the interview, the youth minister explained that while the needs are great within her community, the government recognizes the importance of helping those who have a greater need. Persons who are in greater need, there is need across the board, but there are some persons whose condition is worse than others. And so I try to pay attention to those persons first. And so we are trying, and I think those persons we've helped are very, very grateful for the help that they've gotten. And even when you spoke to some of them, you got the sentiment, their own sentiment about the housing revolution. I think this is something that this government has done, which has done I, I mean, brought a lot of comfort to our, our, our populace and the persons, you know, are very appreciative of the fact that the Honourable Prime Minister can from time to time make some money available that we can assist persons with housing. The Minister told us that she was particularly impressed with the gratitude shown by those who benefited from the Housing Revolution program. When you go to the houses that you see the persons make an extra effort to get the paint because probably they would not have been able to build a house. So we've now given them the house, they will get the paint and they will paint and they will beautify the house. There are some people who are still challenging even getting the paint to paint the houses, you know, and some people are still making more requests. And as I said to them, we cannot really meet all the needs because while you may be asking for paint, but there are some persons whose houses are leaking you know and so we would need to pay attention to the persons whose houses are leaking so they can to can 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 benefit from the from the whole housing program aside from government's efforts to improve housing in the many hamlets within the grand bay constituency scores of residents are now benefiting from the dominica labor party government's recent initiative and that's to regulate land fees to one dollar a square foot this is in accordance with government's policy to provide affordable housing to the less fortunate citizenry of Dominica. Following the, the, the Geneva uprising, persons really occupied quite a bit of the Geneva estate and persons built on it and so. And the land was sold to some persons, I do not remember if it was at $4 or so a square feet. And we, I think it was still a great challenge for most of the persons to pay for the land. And during the time of my, the, 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 during the time that my deceased husband, Pierre Charles, was the parliamentary representative, there was a drop in the cost, I think, to if it's 250 per square foot. And even then, persons still could not pay for the land, and some persons had not paid anything on the land. And so we decided as cabinet, the, myself, the prime minister, we decided to look at it and see if we can really try to ease the pressure that the persons were experiencing. And so we've decided to drop the land dollar a square foot and 40 persons benefited and there's still more to benefit. Some of those residents from Highland were just happy to share their thoughts with us. <laughs> yes, I have allocated some land for me at a low um, price, at a <laughs> dollar a square foot. So I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> and may God bless Mr. Honorable Scarlett, always. Well, she's she not doing too bad. I, I satisfy for, for the price of the land because it, it couldn't be better than that. 
One particular resident of Highland who is living with the impact of having suffered from a stroke insisted on speaking with the GIS news team. As a result of the stroke, Anastasia Abraham's speech has been affected. When asked if she was happy for the land at the new price, she said, Yes, yes, I am happy for it. When asked if there's anything else she'd like to say, she says, You're right. You're right. You're right. Sylvia Henry, another resident of Highland, told us that if it were not for the government, she could not have owned the land that she has been residing on for many years now. Francis Barron of Geneva House is yet another beneficiary of government's housing revolution program. After her mother was able to pay for the land at the new regulated price, Francis was given assistance by government to build her new two-bedroom home. I'm very happy for what the government did for me because I don't think I would be able to build a house on my own. I'm very happy and I'm, I'm very comfortable. Well, I was living in just in that little house here. Yeah. It was not really 100%, but I used to be in it because I didn't know where else to stay. But then I keep on asking questions and people keep on telling me, well, go there, go there. And then finally, my, my pal rep, she worked hard. She, she, she helped me a lot. She worked hard with me to see I get this building and I want to say tell the Prime Minister thank you very much and I mean everybody need but it have what that need most you know and I'm very happy and thank you for what he did for me. Anastasi Blaise, another resident of Geneva House, when asked how she felt about the land fees having been regulated to one dollar a square foot, she became overwhelmed with emotion. Her parliamentary representative stood by her side. I am on the land for a long while, and I was waiting on my son, Max Anderson, to pay the land for me. But he passed away in America. I have kids, but what they're doing is to satisfy them and their kids. So praise God. The government helped me, and my pal rep. Just in a child. The land was 10,000 and I, I was wondering how I go and pay it. But the government released me, take out from it for me. And now I only have 4,000 to pay. Thank you, Jesus. And the government helped me very good and very nice. When my son passed away, God will bless you with spirit. To date, 40 people have already benefited from this scheme. Member of Parliament for the Grand Bay constituency, Honorable Justina Charles says the housing program has impacted positively on the lives of scores of residents of her constituency. The government has forfeited over $285,000, you know, just to give the land at a dollar square foot. And so that is indirectly putting money into the Grand Bay economy because that is money that would have gone out, you know? So that is indirectly putting money into the Grand Bay economy. And one of the things that I said to the, to the, to the people who, uh, who have now benefited from the land is to ensure that, as I said, that they can pay for their land and, and they, can, they can own their certificate of title. Um, one of the things that we found is that even with the reduction in the fee, there is still even more benefit, not just the price of the land, but the administrative fee for working the certificate of title is going to be less because now the value of the land has been dropped to a dollar. So I think now they're going to have to pay less to even get the certificate of title. So generally, I think it has been, it has, it, I think it was a very, very worthwhile venture and I think the persons are very happy. At the inauguration of the Tetmon Village Council in May, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt made a further commitment towards the housing revolution program within the community. And all of these things we have to do to ensure that you here in Tetman can benefit from the economic activity, increased economic activity in Dominica. And this is our commitment to ensuring that 
um, we improve the housing. And this is why I'm making a further commitment to you, the residents of Tetmon, that I shall approve an additional $150,000 that will go towards Tetmon for home repairs and the provision of washroom facilities in some homes. And on the question of, of housing, and I was saying to some people recently, and even my own, in my own constituency where I'm from, and I, I live all my life in, in, in Vegas country, to what will say that I am French and I'm from Guadeloupe and France and other places. I spent all my life in Dominica, besides going to study overseas. And since independence, no government ever fixed up one person house in my constituency. Farmer to build a house. The first government that ever came forward and started helping people to improve their homes and to build homes for people is this government. Currently, 10 Petro Casa houses are being built in the center area of Grand Bay, courtesy of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela through its Alba Fund and PDV Caribe Dominica Limited. These houses are made out of PVC, a plastic derived from the process of refining crude oil. It is then filled with concrete to create durable homes with a high degree of flexibility and can withstand Category 5 hurricanes. These three-bedroom houses will consist of a master bedroom, two bathrooms, one separate for children, another for parents, and a kitchen equipped with a refrigerator and a stove. The Prime Minister says while decisions have not been made as to who would receive these homes, it is the wish of the Prime Minister that these houses be given to disadvantaged single mothers. One of the things we are looking at is all the single parents. Single parents who probably would never be able to own a piece of land, whose parents never had a piece of land to live for them, and probably has, does not have the means to own a piece of land. And for that reason, if you don't have a piece of land, the chances of building, constructing a house would even be, uh, 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 you know, would just not be a reality at all. So I think one of the things we're hoping to do is to give attention, pay attention to those persons who are really in those situations where they would not be able to own a piece of land and not be able to own a house. So we will give priority to the single parents. Um, but I am hoping that after the selection is made and persons are there, when it's completed, that persons will really have show appreciation for those things. Because while government sits and government put things in place to address the needs and the plight of those persons, I think they too, everybody, we have a responsibility to show appreciation and to develop those things further. Employment opportunities have been provided for a significant number of men and women residing in and around Grand Bay as a result of all of these projects. We have quite a few of our own persons in Grand Bay being engaged and employed in there. You know, so while some persons are saying that nothing is happening, but quite a few families are benefiting from the work that is going on in the constituency. During the interview, the minister made a call for people across the country to take ownership of their communities. Just after you passed, just by the health centre, there was really a, a ditch which made most vehicles, in fact, would not pass there because it was really affecting their vehicle, especially if the vehicles were loaded and the bosses, I mean, they complained. And one of the things that we did was one Saturday I spoke with, I wrote to Dawa School, tried to get two pipes, and then we dug it, thank God for Shane Alexander, who is one of the fellas who do quite a bit of the road works. He volunteered and he came with his backhoe and dug it for us and then we got cement I gave the cement I, I, I contributed the cement and we got tarish and we voluntarily did it and I mean persons are now passing there and some of most of the bus drivers are so happy for that thing so you see if persons are willing to help themselves I mean as parliamentary representative I will do all I can do to provide some of the resources as small as it is so we can come out today and do things to help ourselves and when we do that we will accomplish more we cannot just sit and expect government to do everything for Toward the end of the interview, the parliamentary representative expressed her gratitude to the Prime Minister and her cabinet colleagues. And I really want to thank the Honourable Prime Minister for his his support and other members of cabinet for their support because I cannot complain. I mean you go with all of the constraints that all the ministries and all the ministers are going through but you will come with your own concerns and they will try their best to address it. So I think we work as a team. 
and I need to commend all of the members of cabinet for the support that we give to each other and the prime minister who is I mean the head of the cabinet who is always willing to go the extra mile to assist us because he understands the plight of the persons within the constituencies and I think it's it's incumbent on all of us to give him the support that he requires to ensure that we can really do the best for our constituents and for Dominica by extension.